Techie's ban. I think you have to ban Techie yeah. at the fifth ban from Invictus Gaming now, if you go into this. Because Secret is the team that has played most Tusk Techie combo. And uh, yeah, it's still available. But first, IG have a pick coming up as well. I think it's going to be a disabler again, no matter what. You have to have good disables against the Storm. It is so crucial. You can't just feed a lion, because then when Storm has an Orchid, he goes on lion, problem solved. Honestly, they could still grab the Zen King you were yeah. mentioning. I think it's still a very good pick from them. It wouldn't be bad. Is there any other hero that comes to mind to you, Merlini, and looking nah. at IT's uh, draft right now? I'm surprised Dazzle's being ignored. I think Secret is actually the team that used to pick up Dazzle the most. Yeah. Uh, Witch Doctor is also... Uh, oh, there's a oh. Dazzle. <laughs> Let's pick nice that. call. Wrong team, but it's fine. What's that? Yeah. Team M. You, you don't... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he knew what was coming up. Actually, just... you know what? In the last two days, seriously, Ben, ben is, is... About three seconds after he says, well, you know, they haven't got to win the Wyvern. Boom, there it is. Every time. Team M, man. Five team M. He's actually texting the team right now what to pick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we're looking for the last bands for both the teams. So IG obviously looking for a mid hero, whereas Secret... I mean, it's still a bit open, but it's most likely going to be Kuroki's hero or support at least, maybe Poppy's. But um, as for IG, it's very clear. If they get, I mean, if Secret they, get their hand on the techie here, they will take it. So I, I think you're right in that it's their they, hero. Surely. So no Lina for Ferrari. Man, Lina was one of the best mids left out there. Combos well with Dark Seer, can do well versus Storm Spirit. It's and a very good ban. Yeah, it's a good counterplay to a Tusk Snowball, but. Not sure what else is out there. For yeah, them. and something that could pressure SF because Lion and Dazzle, they're very defensive supports early on. They're not going to pressure SF mid at all, so let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, wow. That is the Techies ban. You, yeah. you can hear the crowd actually <laughs> yeah. booing for the Techies ban. Oh no. They well, wanted to see some explosions. Well, I don't think IG wanted to explode though, <laughs> no. so you, you can't get mad at them for this. Definitely. But um, which lineup do you like better right now? Mad, Merlini, Wood? Is there any that you favor? I think the two lineups are very different. I yeah. feel like Secret has more options, uh, whereas um, IG have the better team fight, has the better team fights, but still, you know, it, it could be. I think both drafts are very solid. Yesterday it was very obvious that there was like weaknesses with Secret draft. Today it's completely different. They could do whatever. Yeah, I think S Secret has way stronger lanes and they scale way better. They can also um, farm way more efficiently. So I, I like secrets a little bit more. Oh, I really oh. like this. I am so glad we get to see Puppy's champ. Yeah, that is such a relief. And the crowd gets uh, a <coughs> cheer from that as well. Possibly the most feared Chen yes. in all of Dota 2. Yeah, with him and Ake. Yeah. I, I, I gotta have. I gotta give special mention to Ake as well. Mm -hmm. Like they are the best Chen players, and like Puppy does wonders with his Chen, both in the early stage of the game, and we we've seen Chen. From complexity, it was very successful early on, but you can trust Puppy for having an impact during throughout the whole game, not only in the first 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, in hindsight, that part, that part of the, that ban was very difficult for IG, wasn't it? Oh yeah, very difficult. I mean, they've gone with the techies, but then you lose Puppy's chance. And here goes the burning engine. They had to see it coming. Like, Running would never play an elimin elimination game without playing anti -mage. This is so exciting seeing these two drafts. Yeah, signature heroes for everyone. Okay, signature heroes abound. This one could be fireworks. Hold on to your seats again because we are about to get into our first game in the lower bracket as we head down to the commentary team. It's all yours, guys. Thank you very much, Paul. We've got some excited fans here. I'm LD, of course. I'm joined by Blitz. Blitz. I, I wasn't sure what you were going to do during this cast. I really thought it was going to need to be a solo cast, but you got lucky. They picked Storm, so you have something to talk about. Yo, oh, people are going to believe that. Like, this, like, 14-year-old kid comes up to me, and he's like, do you really only play Storm? And I'm like, no. But he's just an idiot. The gauntlet has been thrown now. It's a job to prove me wrong. All right, so it's actually going to be a Chuan Lion. That means that we're going to see a Ferrari 430 gyrocopter mid, and it looks like... Yeah, we saw it actually work with LGD when they played it with Maybe against Complexity. It was incredibly successful. It's not a terrible mid. It's just one that you don't see very often because the punishing potential is kind of low. A lot of signature heroes this game. I think, uh, I think it's worth talking a little bit about how different this is for Secret in particular. Because yesterday, 
we saw one draft in particular, game one, where there were a lot of heroes that secret of not, it's not really like your go-to secret type of draft. They had little AOE, little team fight. We saw a Spirit Breaker, we saw a Viper, a Dazzle. Now, obviously, they all know how to play these heroes as individuals, but it doesn't really feel like it was their style. And obviously, the results speak for themselves. Didn't work out. Then in game two, secret, again, you look at the draft. They went for the anti-mage Shadow Fiend opening. Again, not comfort heroes, but this game, both teams, Outside of the Gyrocopter, made a lot of comfort heroes coming out, especially for Secret, I feel like you've got the, the Storm Shadow Fiend, to me, just like two of the most iconic cores for this team, and of course the Puppy Chen. We've seen a lot of the offlane Tusk for Zai, so it feels like Secret are, are sticking to what's worked for them coming into this tournament. Yeah, I really didn't like their draft yesterday because it just felt like they overly relied on Zai to be their initiator. Both of their supports in both the games were incredibly defensive. It was only the Blink Dagger Axe that could have really saved them in that second game, and E-Home got rolling a little bit too quickly, but I'm incredibly excited to see S4 just play a different type of hero. He was given the SF last game, but you know he hasn't played that playmaker role the entire tournament, but Storm for him, I know is a comfort hero. And I'm really excited to see where he goes when it comes to a build. I talked with him in the past, and I think he said he was a proponent of just going the Bloodstone first and it getting something like an attack speed item like the Maelstrom or the Mjolnir. And so really? whether or not, yeah, that was his build. I tried it a few times. It worked out incredibly well, but whether or not he decides to pull it off in this game. All right, I guess we'll see what the plan is here. Do want to point out, we didn't actually talk about it, but Faith actually TP down bottom right off the bat as they look to make a move here on mid, but Arteezy will play it safe. He's got the Hill Ward, so he does see the movement of Tuan early with the boots, trying to secure the lane start for 430 and get him out to an early lead on the Gyrocopter, but they really prioritize getting this lane ward down bottom. It seemed like they're worried about Secrets level one, so they even use a TP to get the ward there. And Well, Rocket coming in, bit of harass here early. Is this going to be the build where you level up the homie missile repeatedly? Does he just get a value point in it for 430? I have seen a few mid gyrocopters max this out or even get two or three points. I think if you're going to get even a single level of it, it's just worth it to at least get the second level. The damage almost, it actually does double. Mm -hmm. So the value point in it is really good, but I would prefer him to still go for a typical build, like uh, prioritizing the rocket barrage over the flat cannon. The problem for him, though, is you actually just need to kill the creep wave before you can dive a hero like a Shadow Fiend because the turnaround potential is so high. If Shadow Fiend just gets hit by the rocket in the middle of the creep wave, all he has to do is stand his ground in the middle of the creep wave and he'll be perfectly fine. All right, well for now, Arteezy still handing on pretty decently in terms of CS, four and one, despite the early harass from Chuan. And looks like both teams trading the safe lane farm, but we can see the offlane Tusk of Zai. He's struggling a bit. He's got the early mango if he wants to pop it for a single spell, but Burning's been zoning him back and in that sense, it feels like a really good anti-mage game through the laning stage. We've seen some AMs get contested, but Burning should have a good time here. Already 8-8, eight and eight. and oh, I guess the big question is, what are we going to see out of Puppy on the Chen? We've seen a lot of active Chen play today in the, the previous series, the complexity match, and early movements, and a very successful movements from Z-Freak, but Puppy, oftentimes, it feels as of late, when he does play the jungler, he's a little bit more focused on his own economy. They are making their move with Kuroki here towards mid on the Wyvern. But no opportunity to go in just yet. He's got an invis rune. It was scouted here by Raiden Observer Ward. And you can see 430 staying very far back. Yeah, and if you notice that Puppy's, while he's stacking, he actually sent the Seder Tormentor mid just to harass. And also, that's an extra creep to hit uh, to eat up some Rocket Barrage damage. And it has the added benefit of giving Artur health regen in a the mid. Oh, they're they're making the this. move. 430. He's got to be careful. One raise coming out. Arteezy oh. with the second. It's a first blood for Secret. Perfect execution. Even the shockwave from the Satter there used to secure the kill. And, well, he was playing safe, just not safe enough. The thing is, Puppy kept that creep there the entire time, and so when it got aggressive, Ferrari's like, okay, I've seen this before, he's just gonna throw a nuke at me, but they actually use the creep to tank the tower so they can complete the dive without any recourse, and great job by Secret. Wow, Arteezy off to a hot start here. Now 14 and six in the mid lane, and despite the early pressure coming out, oh. get a little round of applause for the homie missile, but not gonna amount to a whole lot here. And he's not opted to level it up yet. He hits level four. He's actually looks like he's holding a skill point for now. So we'll have to wait and see where 430 wants to take this build. But Chuan is spending a lot of time mid. It seems that's kind of the priority for him. As he just sits back. Looks like he wants to protect 430 from the aggression of Kuroki. They continue to dual lane here. And meanwhile, the jungle, so far we're seeing it looks like a triple stack at the medium camp. Uh, actually, both medium camps now. One with a double stack. So they are looking for that boost in the economy as they head towards the tail end of the early laning stage. Yeah, and it's perfectly fine for Chuan to just sit there in the mid lane because Zai isn't showing up 
at the bottom lane anymore. And Anti Mage by himself, once he gets the Ring of Health, can pretty much zone out the Tusk. But I'm a little bit concerned right now with the picks in general. I think the Anti Mage is probably the greatest counter to Storm, aside from Silencer. And you're picking it, especially as a one position Storm Spirit. That means your one position immediately just gets hard countered by their one position. Oh. It's really rare to see that in a game, but uh, the problem is that they need S4 to initiate with how things are going so far. Oh, they made a long rotation here towards the top side of the map. Arteezy and Kuro both joining forces. It was spotted by a Radiant Observer Ward, which has not been dewarded yet. Some wasted time here from Arteezy, giving a little space to 430, who does go back for the Rocket Barrage Max. Now three points in that. Closing in on level six, and it is one of the nice things about the gyro mid. You get your levels a little bit faster than if you're off in the safe lane. I think you move early. Maybe he would have gone for the second level of homing missile if he was doing slightly better in this mid lane, but after that first blood, I don't think you can really get aggressive on the Shadow Fiend anymore. And you have to worry about the counterplay as well. Puppy can always come in. They've been camping mid with the Wyvern, so it seems like Secret are just investing a lot in protecting Arteezy early. Yeah, for sure. And Puppy at the same time has stacked it up quite a bit. I'd imagine you can give this to either the Storm Spirit or the Shadow Fiend, which is a good part of their lineup, but it is a little bit greedy and it is going to require a lot of roaming from their supports. I, I wonder, do, do, you, do you see any potential for IG here to try and contest the stacks? Is that something they're capable of this game, or is it, is it too risky of a play? Because we have seen some teams even go for like a 3-4 hero smoke to try and steal them or, or find some early hero kills. I think it is possible. Secret don't have the best early game fighting heroes. The Tusk is too under level to be able to support anything. Now, he's only level 2 right now. Uh, meanwhile, at that top lane, the Darkseer is already level 5. Like, if he wanted, he could just Ion Shell himself. You throw the call down and steal a lot of stacks at once. They are trying to go in on him, but S4 is not level 6 just yet. Even the Chen Centaur Conqueror rotating through, but hey, he's just too high level. Luo already. Sal's up. We'll get to full HP. And I mean, on the subject of potentially contesting the jungle, I want to point out, Chuan has been doing his own stacking now. He gets uh, what looks to be a triple stack ready to go for 430, and, and he does have a smoke. They get the gyrocopter level 6. Now, a lot of the other teams have been going for these guys, but top lane, Luo, oh, the stop just barely missing. Oh, that could have been a potential kill. In fact, S4 almost dies on the way out. Luo just finding all kinds of room here in the off lane. Yeah, this is going to be really terrible because he actually has to go back, and if you notice, they're all in this top lane, whereas Burning just continues to free farm at bottom, and I mean, Storm versus Anti-Mage, that's a hard counter. The reason why is because if you look at Secret's lineup, they really need their Storm to initiate, but you're using about half or more of your mana every single time, and that mana void is going to be so powerful. And, I mean, it's a burning Anti-Mage. I think we talked about it yesterday. IG, their weakness right now seems to be they rely on the individual performances of their players too much, but you gave Burning his iconic hero, and you, you picked the hard counter to go with it. And the lanes are just going so incredibly well here. Secret are really all in it on the cores, as we just saw from the stats pop-up. Puppy has actually bought two bottles, one for S4, one for RTZ. They've also been stacking the crap out of the jungle here. Oh, that's like this is very unusual, and it, it means these cores have to have a good start. If they start giving up kills, it's going to be a big snowball the other way, and you could potentially be crippling the Chen. So Secret, a lot of confidence that a farmed Shadow Fiend and Storm can take this game over, as the first move is going to come from RTZ. He's in Viz right now. Rotating and hoping to find somebody off in the jungle, but nobody's in sight. Now the ping comes towards bottom where S4 is ready. He is six. They're pretty strong right now, but Faith in a good position, it looks like, to protect Burning. And he yeah. doesn't find any stacks. Arteezy will clear out some of these Radiant jungle camps, but none of them are stacked, just single creep camps. They rotated both of their cores down here. They at least have to get one kill out of this, but again, you have to be so careful of your S4. If you're, if you're going to commit to burning, especially, use any of your mana pool oh, here. They are going on burning now, but go. the heal immediately comes out. That's not the easy target. And they're not even going to bother in the end, but more heroes are inbound. Zai and Puppy also moving towards this bottom lane. Now the ball in, and they engage again onto Burning. There's still a Grave available. They do force it out. The raise isn't going to connect initially. Burning low. He's forced to blink into the trees. They really want to pressure this tower, and with reinforcements storming in, they may be able to get it. Out goes the TP, but bottom lane is secure for Secret. And with this, the tier one's going to fall. Oh, I think so. Burning. Oh, he guesses wrong. He was looking in the trees. Now the pink comes out. He knows. He sees it with the sigil. The blink's not ready yet, and Burning will go down. Down, Secret find him, tucked away in a little cubby, and he doesn't make it out. And with that, the tier one down, the aggressive lane ward planted. It seems like Secret want to use these two super fat cores to just take over the Radiant Jungle and shut down the stacks and the farming for the Anti-Mage and Gyrocopter. And they had to go for that because the Anti-Mage is it's going to be really hard to pressure him, especially if a Storm is your initiator. Because if they had made a mistake, the turnaround potential is huge, but 
I mean, the fact that they were able to get him in the trees right there was so fortuitous. They grabbed the tier 1 tower, they killed the burning anti-mage, and that means that they should go for this mid They're going next. for more now, they jump onto 430 here, there's no points in the pole, no call down just yet, 430 slow to pop that one, they'll dodge it once with a score fall away, S4 just toying with the gyrocopter, jumps back in for the last auto attack, and they still have mana if he wants to try a little bit more, but they force out the huge rotation, nobody goes down, oh, burning, blinks burning, forward. blinking into the Shadow Fiend, but Arteezy in full command of this jungle. He's got a lot of confidence now, Blitz. He has the vision. He has the farm advantage. Oh, oh 2k gold advantage over the anti mage. You got free farm bottom. He is so far ahead already. I never even thought of how beneficial that could be. Somebody buys your own bottle that saves you the first three minutes of the game. You saw Arteezy go for the boots first. That helped him lane control and pretty much zone Ferrari out by himself. And he gets a nine minute blink dagger right oh, now. It's aggression. He's going for the big plays. It's aggression from Arteezy here. And what do they have here to cancel an early Requiem? There's no points in vacuum. There is only Chuan who can prevent this combination from coming out. It's, it's IG's turn to smoke. Chuan's leading the way. He has the Tranquil Boots up, so he's pretty fast. Looking at the Dire Vision, though, Blitz, they have a lot of, lot of just places on the map that are completely scouted out now. One that's not could be S4. They're going to rotate towards Puppy, oh, it looks really like. They really don't want Puppy. Even if they get him, he's level three. He's got no farm here. He's really a hard support. Viva bottom. The real kill. Burning, barely blinking away. Kept alive by Faith, but Faith will pay with his own. Does Arteezy go in deeper? The blink dagger revealed and a successful play already. Can they even hold this tower? Looks like they didn't even find Puppy in the end. He was able to back off, so secret. They go from what feels like a very passive laning stage to all of a sudden hitting the ignition switch. Almost C-Deck-esque in terms of how aggressive they gotten on the map. I mean, this is even more aggressive than C-Deck. The fact that you bought two of your cores of bottle means that Secret, their strategy is really clear. They're just using this Chen to establish the early game control. And you've got a Shadow Fiend and a Storm Spirit, one of the best one-two combos in the game. With how mobile they can be, the split push is really available to them at all times. They farm out both jungles incredibly quickly, and they can apply pressure nonstop. And I mean, Burning's been forced into this top lane, but I don't even know how long he can stay here for. His IG, they went for the smoke gank to kind of clear out their own, uh, clear out the enemy jungle, reestablish map control, but it just didn't happen because at the same time, they went on Burning at bottom, and they had to give it up. And, I mean, and they also stop his farm as well. And when exactly. they put the pressure there, it, it means IG aren't going for a smoke elsewhere. They're just trying to hang on to the bottom lane, so... It's also a defensive play in that sense. It prevents the early roam from the gyrocopter, which we've seen work out very well. Coming into this tournament, or coming into this match, I should say. Burning top lane, looking uh, just to play this very defensive top lane. At this point, it feels almost safer than bottom, where he's got no vision and no idea where secret are. They see Arteezy just parked here very deep in behind enemy lines, but in fact, he sniffs out the gank. He'll just TP away, and it's going to be a lot of wasted time for IG. Maybe oh, they get a ward down. committing for this. Oh, they, they really hope to find him. They get the lane ward down, but that's small consolation because it's nothing here to kill. This is sort of the problem, though, with the gyrocopter mid, is that you don't really have that time to catch back up into the game. You're relying on really dominating in the laning phase, but it's a Shadow Fiend mid who had a lot of support, who had a bottle bot for him. You're not going to be able to win that lane, and that's, I think, they had a little bit too much of an over-reliance on that, as Burning now is forced into pretty much the off lane. He doesn't have the best places to farm. He can't naturally go back to the jungle when he pushes the lane. He just has a wait for the creeps to essentially come to him. And this is not the most efficient way to farm right now, but it, it all comes down to the fact that Arteezy has a thousand HP and a blink dagger. And you, you know, I have to commit so much to gank him. It really reminds me of when we used to see a lot of Tinker play, especially back, way back when the Rockets build was really popular, where he, he, Burning can't really stand in lane and farm. If, if the Shadow Fiend's there, it's one raise, a couple auto attacks, he's back. He'll just blink away, dodges the stun from Chuan. Oh, man. They... I think they actually expect that there's a ward uphill, but there, there's nothing that here. Just pure reactions time. coming out from Arteezy. Yeah, and they're just wasting too much time because they realize they need to gank, and that is the correct play, but it's just not successful right now. A secret. They're just pushing them all over the map right now. There's not a whole lot of places for them to go. And all right, Luo has to know that that was a raise that was shot there. But Arteezy might just run into him as he's running down. Uh-oh, there's a lot of potential for a kill here. Arteezy, one raise, two raise, he got him. And blinks forward just in case, dancing on his corpse a bit. Secret are playing map control Dota right now. They are getting up in their opponent's faces and you know, look at some of the games they lost in the group stage, but it's a lot of them they got they played very defensive, almost a little bit greedy. This is a totally different look from this team. They, they have done a 180 since yesterday. Obviously, there was a big discussion and, 
you know, the, the so-called locker room about how they should adapt after the way Ehome took care of them. But now top lane, they make a go on Zai here. Can they finally get on the board? It's 5-0 to zero currently. Zai takes the stun from Tron. The finger is used. And at long last, they get a kill. A much needed one, burning the one to collect the last hit. But mid's also being pressured. The secret are going to move in. Faith and 430 first back. Not even able to defend the tower. And with a gyrocopter, normally that's your bread and butter. This is like the best hero for that situation. It's going to be more offense. Arteezy into the Yule Scepter. Obviously, this is multi-purpose blitz, but he, he could easily solo kill just about any hero on the map with it. This is mainly just meant for even more map control right now so that he can pressure any hero on the map. If you decide to go for the mech, the issue is that you're a little bit more static as a Shadow Fiend because you want to play around your team with that mech. And even as a Shadow Fiend with the mech, you can get blown up really easily. So it's better to just five man with it. But by going for the Blink Dagger into the Yule Scepter, he can pressure Burning by himself. He can get a solo kill on the Gyrocopter. And what they're doing right now is just putting complete pressure on the map. And it allows him to pretty much solo force IG to go for a three man, four man. And we're seeing that right now. And this is another four man smoke. And this has to pay off. They can't just walk away with the kill on Zai. They have to get the tower bare minimum, but this is dangerous because everybody from Secret can rotate. Arteezy has a TP, Kuro has a TP, and a bottom S4 has a DD and a TP. I mean, this is a really risky play, but IG don't really have other options. They don't actually have a very high level vacuum currently. It's only level one for Luo, and on top of that, there's no mech yet, so... I it, it is a long shot, to put it mildly. Secret with the Aegis, tons of farm. You're trying to gank a Tuskar. Very, very difficult to kill off instantly, and they're just not going to find it. The smoke ends up wearing off. Uh, didn't quite see Chuan here, I think, but any moment, IG about to be scouted out. Defensive positioning from Zai, and just no opportunity. And Arteezy, he knows there's nobody alone up top, so he's going to push in mid. He's got absolutely no fear blitz, even if they catch him. With the Yules in the blink, it's pretty much a guaranteed escape, and certainly enough time for the backup to arrive. Plus, the Chen heals now online, and... Well, that's something that can even further let him get away with aggression. This is so bad right now for IG. This is like Superman Shadow Feed at 16 minutes. He feels like God. Yeah, they just four-man smoked the top, sat behind the anti-mage for over a minute, were unable to get anything. They didn't even get the kill on Zai. They weren't able to pressure the tower. And during that time, Secret were both able to clear out the jungle, push out both lanes to a tier two tower, and just farm nonstop on four of their heroes. And even Zai was farming that entire time at top. He wasn't even concerned. He's like, okay, if you die for me, you won't get the tower because our entire team can be there in an instant. And Puppy even has the medallion. This is so much team fight potential. They, they are just choking IG out. And I, I have to ask, what, what's the plan here if you're IG? You've tried to smoke. It hasn't worked. Do you need to try and like risk buying a gem on a support just to get some D wards? What, what do you do in this situation as IG? The problem is you just need to get more farm on Ferrari. He has to be there for the damage, but at the same time, he's just so under farm. Like, 71 CS gyrocopter at 17 minutes is rarely going to have any impact at all. Arteezy's Arteezy doubling him up. He's just straight up doubling up his CS here. 148 to 74. And he's going in. He finds the Yoles. Look for the Spirit Bomb. See ya! Arteezy makes it look easy. Styling on IG as they continue to just flex their muscles and move out on the map. They are choking the life out of Invictus Gaming. There's just no breathing room here. Even Burning struggling to find his way out of the base. Now he knows it's safe to move into his woods. It's really not, though. But <laughs> S4 has an Orchid now, too. But uh, yeah, now gone. it's not so safe as you put down. This is the... The thing is, IG have all of their hopes right now on this Burning Anti-Mage. That's the reality of it right now if you're an IG fan, but... The one thing that they have going for him is that Burning now has his Battle Fury. He has access to his own jungle. The problem is that if he shows himself on the map, S4 will die for him every single time because S4 is no longer the real carry. Arteezy is. So he's perfectly willing to one for one just to pressure the anti-mage right now. Uh, speaking of pressure, bottom lane, there's the Yules again. Arteezy setting up S4 here. And Luo, next man on the list, tries to make a little room, but pays the price. Another takedown, along with the tier one top, which we saw fall. This has just been essentially a flawless game from Secret. A 10,000 gold lead at 18 minutes. A Roshan, complete map control, two ultra farm cores, burning slow down significantly, oh, and constantly running. Everything going completely according to plan. And uh, frankly, this is the Secret that people thought they were going to see on their first appearance in the main event. They look hungry. IG, really in trouble. It's just smart picks, good strategy, that double bottle played by Puppy really paying off. That's the true selfless support. When he didn't have boots at eight minutes, I was like, all right, this is going to be a rough game for him. But they don't really need him to do anything because this is the 
I, this is the great part of having two superstar players on your course. You can just trust them. You can say, okay, I can have zero impact in the game, buy you guys bottles, and you'll still outperform them. That really does show some faith in the team after yesterday. There was the moment at the end of the game where Arteezy blinks on top of four heroes. Wasn't his finest hour, but they come right back today and they say, you know what, we believe in this guy. He's gotten this, us this far. Let's just double down on his ability to perform in the clutch, and, and that's what we're seeing so far. Yeah, and Puppy still managed to have impact with that Seder gank mid, but <laughs> I don't want to give this game too much credit to just uh, the cores. Puppy's just done an excellent job right now. Zai hasn't died. He's actually only died once this game. Uh, Kuro's just been off the map the entire game, making it really difficult for IG to get any sort of smoke ganks off at all. And I mean, this game really comes down to burning and how quickly he can farm. He's He's playing really risky right now in his own jungle, but he realizes he has to. He has to get that Manta style as fast as he can before S4 is able to find him with that Orchid. Because if he cuts down on his momentum at all, the game just gets so rough for him. Like, one death at this phase of the game when you're this far behind with what Secret have means almost a guaranteed loss. Yeah, at that point, they push. You won't have your Manta style in time, but Burning, he dodges the pressure, he gets away with it, and now he begins to push out the top lane. How far will he go? Behind him, a couple supports moving in. In fact, 430 also here, just going into drums. Arteezy, the man up top, doesn't have a BKB, but it's got the Blink and the Yule Scepter. So much disengage. The Chen heal to worry about. Currently no TP on S4, and I think Arteezy just seeing the fact that they don't have the Storm TP and that everybody's off the map. They're just going to play it safe, not taking any chances, dodging every move IG want to make. It's buying burning a little space to farm, but... He's the only man getting the farm as S4 moves in with an invis rune. Sentry's waiting for this. Do IG want to go on him? Oh, they it know he's seems there. no. They're going to wait. They're going to set the trap, I think. Even and farther Chuan's back. Position. They're surging Chuan in, but he has second thoughts. Now the clap comes on the Faith, and S4 looking for the jump forward. Body blocking as well, trying to get the rest of the team in position. Very nicely done by Puppy, and Faith in a quite a bit of danger here. The ball goes the other direction, though. S4, he wanted something bigger. He was searching perhaps for burning, and now he dives onto Faith. He tries to dodge this stone, but he gets back, back into it. Faith Finger was waiting, IG! Excellent combo play there, finally getting a core kill and buying Burning a tiny sliver of time, which will use to push out this mid lane and just slow the game down. But it's taking the biggest combo plays of IG's life just to keep this even reasonably close. I still think that IG can do it. Burning could always mana void S4 into a bunch of heroes. That potential still exists. As somebody who plays Storm frequently, I know that Anti-Mage is one of the best counters in the game to it. It doesn't matter how farmed you are as a Storm, all it takes is you overextend with your zips a little bit too much and Burning's waiting in the rear with that Mana Void. You can't get too overly aggressive like that if you're S4. And I mean, Burning is still doing a really good job in keeping up with net worth. He's now only a thousand gold away from the Storm Spirit, not much uh, further from the Shadow Fiend, who's gone pretty much this weird offensive build that is meant to win you the mid game. Like a Blink Dagger and a Yules isn't going to help you when it comes to the ultra, ultra late game. So Burning can still do this. Yeah, so it's going BKB, and they do have quite a bit of just nukes and lockdown here in IG. So as you mentioned, very offensive. May go back for a BKB at some point. He's not spending his gold, and oh, there's the completed Eye of Scotty. So yes, he is. That is a super stack Shadow Fiend. And at this point, Arteezy is is the man of the hour, but it's burning. Just continue to push out the lanes, IG, trusting in the burning anti-mage. And I think it's worth mentioning in the group stage, IG, one of the only teams to take any games off of LGD, and they did it with a burning anti-mage. He had an easier time in that game, that's for sure. But we have seen this man do it before. You go back to the International 3, only game Alliance loses before the grand finals, including the group stage, was to the burning anti-mage on the old DK, so. He is capable of it, and I think Secret really respecting that. Slowing the game down, waiting for their next round of items. They are going to give up a tier one top here, as IG, first tower of the game at 23 minutes, finally getting on the board. And this next Roshan is going to be huge for Secret, because they don't want this burning anti-mage to get a third item. You can deal with just the Battle Fury treads in the Manta, but if you get something like a Heart or a Butterfly, it would be incredibly hard to deal with this as... I, I think that secret's cue oh, to go to the high ground once they get that Aegis. They've got the blink on Chuan here, and there there is just team play potential. Something that we heard from Waga on the panel and that many have talked about is, and you mentioned as well, often IG has felt like a team of superstar individual players, but just not a, t a true team in the sense of like the way LGD has played or even how Secret has played uh, coming into this event. But if they can hit that combo, the VAC into the Lion Stun with the follow-up Mana Void, the, the ultimate from the Gyro, it could be devastating. So let's see what Chuan can get done with this. Oftentimes one of the biggest playmaking supports in China, right up there with that fly.
Well, after after yesterday, I don't know if anyone's up there with F5. But it's hard to really argue. Maybe he's <laughs> second at that point. But Burning continues to push out this bottom lane. He knows it's relatively safe. He's got the Manta recipe on the Courier, just 400 gold away from the Manta. And once he has that Manta, it is going to be difficult for Secret to find, but they have a lot of different ways to lock him down. Oh, they've got eyes on your own 430. The whole team outside of S4 is moving in. They have the Yules available. No BKB on 430. He's in a lot of danger. And they are going to go with the self Yules. RTZ, a rare misclick. It's going to cost them what looked like a free kill. That could have been the It could have been the high ground as well. Yeah, I think without that gyrocopter, there's actually not a lot that IG can do to hold the high ground. But with him alive, all he has to do is repeatedly spam oh, the call down. They just pinged Burning. They said he has no TP, but he's already on the way back. Yeah, and they have to realize that he's got to be really close to his Manta style right now. And this is going to mean go time for Secret pretty soon once they once they know that Roshan's up. What, what, so is it just the Aegis? Is there anything else you think they should be waiting for here? I'm looking at Puppy pretty close to an Ags. He is level 9 here. So do you, do you try to get this Ags and then use like the extra HP creep? There's currently a, an Ancient Granite Golem up in the Radiant Ancients. Yeah, that would be okay. Typically what I look for when you want to go for a push is just what items are you really waiting for that'll make game-changing impact. Uh, if there are any, and pretty much the Aegis, but in this mid lane, they do see burning, but uh, there's nothing that Kuro is going to get that'll really change this game. I guess that's he... four. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, he should be careful. He, he actually has a haste turn, so as long as he got that off, he was going to be fine. But like you said, it's dangerous. Ferrari dangerous eventually has to get items. Like, he's just way too under farm. You can't just put all of this game on burning right now. Yes, it's an anti mage against the Storm Spirit, but it's a gyrocopter with just the drums right now. And if they don't hit the combo, there's so much lockdown for burning it in these fights. You've got the Winter Wyvern. We saw what he could do versus a very farmed RTZ Shadow Fiend yesterday. You have the, the Tusk Walrus Punch, even the Sigil. Pretty annoying to deal with as an AM. Yeah, the biggest part of Ferrari being under farmed right now is it means that Secret can pretty much blow every single lockdown skull they have on that anti mage, and then they they know that there's nothing else to worry about, that there's no damage. Oh, as far as anticipating the Ancients being farmed, he goes on to Burning. Manta is ready, though, so Burning will Manta and just walk back. As for kind of a ticking time bomb, up to 1,500 mana, 1,000 missing. It's like you said, one good mana void. That's what IG are banking on. They now have the level 4 vacuum. Only one point in the wall, but Luo closing in on the level 2 wall. Uh, Secret are just respecting the high ground defense. They know how strong this combo is, and... They want every tool in their arsenal before they go in. Yeah, Puppy's about to get the Aghanim Scepter. I think that's one of the main things that they're waiting for. Uh, S4 doesn't really need anything else, especially if they give him an Aegis. Maybe they wait for Arteezy to get something like the Butterfly, so he's nigh unkillable. Uh, but at this phase of the game, Anti-Mage just continues to farm out. He has to start applying pressure to towers. You can't just play passive farming style anymore, where he just waits for the creep wave to come to him, LD. He actually has to start pushing in waves just to put, uh, create pressure on the map. And we've seen, it. Secret back. we've seen it from we've seen it from Envy in a couple of his anti-mage games early in the group stage, where his team was totally outlaid. But you would often find him basically engaging guerrilla warfare. He'd be two towers past where the initial enemy tier one stands, just cutting the waves, weaving through the jungle, and, and like you said, putting pressure on the map to relieve the the opportunity for Secret or his Envy's opponents in those games to move in, but Burning has been playing it a lot safer. Haven't seen him in the Dire Woods too much. It is a difference in the, the approach and the style here compared to some of the other anti-mage players in the tournament. Oh, this is going to be but huge. Secret on secret. the move. Now, the ping comes out. The ping comes out. They're expecting an IG in a decent position. This will be the first big team fight. As S4 scouts things out, he's going to ball over the trees. He balls right in to the entire enemy squad. They get the hex to start it off. Mana Void is available. He does use it. Takes down S4, but Arteezy bkb so they don't lose anyone aside from a single storm. And now the cores start to drop the gyrocopter down. Faith also in danger. He does TP home. A two for one. Oh, Arteezy, if he doesn't get the BKB off there, he may be forced back by that Mana Void. But he does, and so he doesn't even take a lick of damage. Yeah, and S4 is going to be up again soon, but I think this is going to tell Secret, okay, let's just go for the Roshan. But look at the numbers there. Two for one, but it's basically an even trade when it comes to the, the golden net worth here. And something that the stats don't show you is the Bloodstone charges that S4 loses that he really needs to be able to snowball and just keep up with this anti-mage at some point, but... Oh, they're going in mid, trying to catch out S4, finger, this could be a disaster for him, yet they bring him down, no, Mana Void! Barely oh, short. He's out of mana, too. Yeah, he's he's got the haste rune, though. Go back himself out. away. And he's close to the next item, and, and since he's the only man farming on IG, what should the item be here, Blitz? Is it a BKB? Do you go Butterfly for the split push? Do you go a Basher or Abyssal for the lockdown? 
You're the only man getting items right now in IG. Get a butterfly, go for the split push, don't bother engaging. That fight at bottom shows you how strong Secret are right now. And now this is going to be even more difficult because S4 was the one hero that you could really kill. But now with an Aegis, I mean, you don't have two mana voids. <laughs> uh, burning burning is, is farming well here, but he hasn't found a way to just <laughs> pull, a, pull a refresher out of his ass just yet. We'll see if he can as the game moves along. Yeah, and Secret, they continue to just shove back all the lanes. You notice what they're doing against their game against Ehome. Arteezy was never able to take down any of the Tier 2s, so there was no real pressure on Ehome to go back. And you, if you notice, I think Secret took a page out of their book and said, even if we have the Aegis, even if we're far ahead, what matters most is that we don't give away any space that we have to. Don't let one of our Tier 2 towers go down, because if a fight goes wrong, I mean, all of a sudden, Burning's knocking at your front door, and you don't want that to happen. And let alone if the other cores start to get some momentum. We are going to see 430 get closer to a BKB. In fact, he's almost got the recipe gold here. And at the same moment, a couple of other key item pickups. Burning, not a butterfly build for him. It seems he wants to be able to go head on a little bit more. Picks up the Basher. It's a more combat-oriented build. Won't help him split push quite as much. But they do have now the Ancient Granite Golem. And when that's near Arteezy, he's sitting around 2,700 HP. He's so, so taggy in the front lines. Let's see what Secret do. This, is, this feels like a timing window. Is it the timing window? Not sure just yet. They haven't made their move on into the base. They continue to just play the farm game, and ever so slowly they do pull ahead, but not at the same clip they were before. No more towers to claim. Roshan currently down. Not quite accelerating the, the disparity as much as they might like. And IG here at top, waiting for something, but... Oh, they're Arteezy. waiting for anyone. He Anyone to an show invis. themselves. It's an Invis Arteezy. Oh, if he There's even a, a sentry here. IG are banking everything on Arteezy getting aggressive, and he might. He walks in. Oh, they. Oh, just out of vision. Close call there. Now the BKB. Requiem attempted. Tron blinks into it. Completely caught off guard. S4 is a little low on mana, down to 650. Could be a ticking time bomb. His fate gets caught. Yules is there to prevent the TP out, and they're going to lose two off of this. The trap was set by IG, but it was Secret who sprung it. Arteezy is just not killable right now unless they could completely chain stun him. And even then, I don't know if they have the damage. They went in after the BKB, no real time for them to respond to that. And Arteezy is just, once he pops that BKB, if you've blinked in aggressively, you're probably going to die every single time. But he doesn't have a BKB up, he doesn't have that Aegis and no Requiem of Souls, but I think they still go for the push here just because both the supports are dead and that means IG aren't going to have enough time to respond to this push, but... Yeah. S4 has the Aegis. He can jump in whenever he sees fit. Lua with a Blink Dagger available. They have the com the combo play here. It's possible they could hit it. He looks for it. There's the back. It's into the stun. It connects on S4. Looking for the Monovoid. He's protected by a Snowball for now. But it's going to end soon. They bring him deep behind enemy lines. Where's the Monovoid? He jumps away from the team, ensuring that Burning won't get multiple kills with it. And still they haven't found one. Now backing off. He's in the middle of the fray. Burning also not finding the opening. And well, in the end, the Monovoid, not a big success here. Secret hanging on to everything. They did lose, use quite a few of their cooldowns, and the Chen army kind of in shambles. So they hold here in the end blitz, but not finding any kills, not getting rid of the Aegis. They've got about two minutes left on that for Secret. I think IG are still pretty satisfied with what happened. They didn't really lose any additional heroes. The tower didn't go down, and I mean, you don't have to deal with the Aegis the next time around, and Burning is starting to get a lot of farm. He's got 2,200 gold on top of him, and this is still one of the heroes in the game that I feel like can win in this type of scenario. The problem for you right now is that Arteezy continues to get a lot of farm. If he wants to go for that butterfly, nobody from IG is going to be anywhere near that MKP. And he's already got 2,700 gold or er, HP, as you said, with that granite golem. And once he has that evasion, it's going to be so hard for IG to deal with him. He can man fight the anti mage. And normally, if you're equally farmed at this stage of the game, the AM starts to take over. But well, even though the farm's close, he's got the support of the Chen. And it does feel like it makes the difference. They have eyes on Burning, and he's blinked forward offensively into an enemy camp. Now they go with the Snowball. He manages to try and dodge it, but the timing's not right. Walrus Punch, follow-up. Yules up. Oh, used on an illusion. Arteezy doesn't find the right target and may not have been able to kill him anyway. But it does force Burning back into the base. It means no pressure on the lanes. And with S4's BKB now in line, Secret may go for round number two here. IG just so bottled up this game. Haven't seen them really get out on the map for... It's been 20 minutes, Blitz. They've got three kills, and everyone has felt like an epic struggle just to get some sort of gold and experience going their way. It's definitely not easy. I guess the good news for them is that most of the kills have come on the S4, so uh, he's not the most overly farm storm that you've ever seen. He does have a decent item timing right now, probably only three or four minutes behind where he wants to be optimally, but it is just Arteezy right now who 
I mean, he's dragging the team through the finish line with 21. <laughs> Follow <000 me>. net worth. <laughs> he's he's a strong one at this point, that's for sure. Uh oh, burning. He's been he's been able to get away with being in his jungle earlier this game, but now seeing nobody on the map, whereas before he saw the storm top, he is gonna back off and move towards the mid lane. But well, puppy also heading that way as well. And in the end, IG just retreat to the high ground. They want to time out this Aegis. It's it's now ended. And that may slow Secret down. They still have more room here, Blitz. Artiz, you mentioned MKB. He can pick that up. S4, plenty of item slots still to be filled. So they haven't quite hit their full, fully loaded potential yet. I guess they don't really have to go for a high ground right now if they don't want to. It is only an anti-mage. It's one of the better heroes of being able to win this game for them. But I mean, what I'm looking at right now and that causes me uh, concern is that Ferrari is still just so under farm. Yes, he's got a BKB, but you need to be able to deal damage so that Ferrari can mop heroes up to begin with. And even their supports, you've got a line that does deal a lot of damage, but Darkseer and Dazzle don't really provide anything for you in team fights aside from their basic spell usage. And uh, you need some physical damage, and Arteezy is a full data list now. They're dialing in on burning. They saw him move into the jungle. This ward has been doing quite a bit of work. If not getting kills, then just preventing him from farming as aggressively. He does TP home again, dodging another gank, and well, he really hasn't died this game, but Secret continuing to slowly pull ahead. Now the graph is plateaued. The next rush will make it dip down a little more, but about a 17,000, 16,000 gold lead. Experience the same. It could turn into the rubber band if they lose the push, but until, until that happens, they're just going to hold a gigantic lead, and it really is just birding. I mean, the next person on the team, half his net worth, and it goes beyond that here to a 1600 net worth dazzle for faith. No four step sight, no kind of glimmer capes or any sort of defensive items available. Burning is going to look for the third tier one of the game. 36 minutes in, even a decent AM game. Normally all these towers are gone, but secret just giving no quarter. It's actually so much farm on him right now, but... I feel like I'm watching four spectators and one player right now. You've just got all of IG either sitting in the base or following Burning around, and then Dyer's the one guy who's able to move out is the Eti Mage. It has to be him, though. Yeah. It's the only way. The heroes. He is going to get another tower bottom, up to 5,200 gold. I'm wondering if he's reevaluating the, the Abyssal here, and he's going to find a double damage rune. Roche not even possible to respawn yet. Doesn't have any lifesteal, so no chance he goes for that but he's trying to keep these lanes pushed out. They're going to drop an Ion Shell on him. S4 so far back, has the BKB as well, so they need to chain stun if they want any chance of a kill. And remember, there is the Chen Aghanim Scepter here, a big heal to come out, potential save. And even then, S4 also playing safe. He's back. Secret, just going to keep on pressuring this top lane, and it, it feels at this point, Blitz, like they want the next stage just before they go. There's no reason not to wait for it. It is going to spawn in time. You've got a few more items that you can get. Artizi is 1,900 gold. He can have to sell one of his items to get boost of travel. He could sell the Yule Scepter just to be able to get maybe something like a butterfly. You can start pressuring around the map, but you don't want to hardline commit to anything, especially when you know for a fact that IG are not going to contest you at the Roshan pit. I think that's absolute suicide for IG. Like If they actually leave their base for once, you probably see them just get wiped. But that's what IG are hoping for right now. Like there's, They're grouped up as four constantly inside their own base while Burning is sent to do suicide missions, scout around the map, and dodge ganks left and right. I mean, this is the most dangerous game that he's playing, but he's showing off right now. He's only died... He's actually died zero times since that initial kill at bottom. And they, they did invest a lot in it, but they just have such good single target lockdown here in Secret. The blink on Kuroki... The, the blink into a walrus punch. It's not the longest duration, but you combo that with a pull from S4 and... Oh, Burning's got a full butterfly completed oh, now. It's, it's all in on the items. He knows he can't afford to be saving for buyback. Even this life might not be enough, but a second underwhelming life without a, an additional tier 4 item isn't going to cut it. And Secret, as soon as they see this, they're probably going to realize Burning does not have buyback just based on the state of the game. I think it's pointless for him to save buyback at this point. Yeah, it really feels that way. Nobody on IG has enough items where it's going to make a difference. He's, so you might as well just all out buy for one fight where you hope that Secret overextend, rather than playing for your seven kind of mediocre lives. You just get your five ultra strong lives. Oh, IG, IG are going go for, for it. They smoke. I don't know if Secret expect this one. They're down in the Roshan pit, but already the Roshan about to drop. It's too late. Secret have grabbed it. Do IG still commit for disengage. this? Secret. Unless you get a really good high ground. Moving in. Are they looking for the combo? You really don't want to go in the Aegis and Cheese Carrier to start off the fight, and IG are going to back down. They, are, they engaged in the game of brinksmanship, but decided 
too risky. Ernie will show himself for one creep wave, but then he's going to have to get right back to the base. The push is coming. The split push won't be fast enough. Oh, he blinks forward. Maybe one more wave and TP home, but... Oh, this tower, the glyph going to be forced out almost immediately. In fact, Bernie realizes it sells the poor man shield. He'll finish off the creeps using the blink, and then it's time to come home and see if they've got the Vex done into a call down Monovoid combo. It's the only way. It really is. Two granite golems here giving RTZ raid boss status, even with the Dazzle. Still sitting at about 13, and there you go. The back, the wall, nothing to oh, follow it, it up. Wasted. Oh, this is not they're good for IG. Go they're, trying to, they're trying to stall for burning, and immediately, as you say, Secret rotates onto the top lane. Glyph is available, but they don't use it in time. Now the tower is down burning. He's not going fast enough here, Blitz. He needs to be, put more pressure on these lanes, working on the tier 3 tower in the bottom side of the map. Secret, for the time being, hanging on. The Glyph has been used on the dire side. Maybe it's just fast enough. The melee rack's already down. Can he finish off a of melee rack here? Bottom IG trying for the trade. They're not going to get it now. The fight breaking on the radiant base. They go Go into Luo. Luo Grant kept alive for now. Arteezy will finish him off. Looks like no. He's hexed and held out of position by Tron, but the snowball. Zai gets it done, and now back to the bottom lane where Burning has been caught out. He blinks out and just in the nick of time, oh, dodging away, and he's going to make it home. So a melee Rex down. They haven't gotten their own here for IG, but it was about as close as you can get to a successful base trip, given the circumstances. Still in the end, secret up a melee Rex to nil. It just all came down to the back wall, just not being comboed with the rest of the team. And IG, not quite on the same page there. And that's what we were talking about. It just feels like their team play is a little bit off. They can't waste that combo. They just can't afford to. Because Secret, if they see that wall dropped and it's not optimal, they'll just run away from it, go for another lane, or even just wait it out the next time around. And you can't waste that if you're IG. You're pretty much all in on that vacuum stun combo with the Lion. You have to hit it, but unable to do so. I think if they had hit it, Burning would have came back and said, okay, we can maybe take a fight here, but he looks to go for the split push instead. The fact that he survived in that situation when S4 had that much mana left, I mean, he just blinks aggressively If he blinks the wrong way, he's dead. <laughs> he blinks the right way and barely lives to tell the tale. Oh boy. Full MKB completed This is, this is your, your pure offensive shadow feed now. I mean, sure, he's got the blink and the Scotty, but... Burning is not going to be able to kill him. Maybe if he gets the Abyssal Blade and an MKB, but the evasion is going to be a trouble. And bear in mind that it's not... Uh, it's the uh, the Solar Crest on Puppy that's really going to make a difference here. All right, Ferrari sees the MKB, decides to go for the Ethereal Blade, realizes that the Butterfly isn't going to be enough. Oh. He's just so far behind in the arms race, and maybe this is the way you have to go as a Gyrocopter. He's not going to be able to trade right clicks. Certainly not with Artesian. I don't even know if he can do it for S4. No, RTZ is going to destroy him in these fights, but uh, for Secret, they have a lot of pushes left over. You've got a 10 second BKB still on S4. He actually hasn't even used it once. A 7 second BKB on RTZ, so it's not like one of those late game scenarios where the BKBs have run out now and IG can turn it around with just their crowd control. You still got a 10 second BKB on that storm and an Aegis completed. And Let's see. You get one shot at this combination if you're IG. You have to hit it this time around. Will Secret even group up? Maybe they don't leave all their cores in one lane. It's S4 going on mid. They're trying to spread this map out so that IG never have a combo available. Oh, that's two granite golds here. Oh, they go in. There they start off with the hex, the finger, the follow up on Ortiz. Can they focus him down? Monoboy was used, but it's not enough. Ortiz alive. Healthy through it all. Burning just not getting the damage done. And now it's Burning being focused. Fights his way through it though. Cast oh, alive. Alive. They just can't kill him. He blinks out. S4. Still with a second life though. 430 in danger as the Ethereal Blade's gonna wear off. He will go down. The combo's been used. Secret have withstood it. And now they get another Shadow Feed, or, uh, or rather another Storm Life. The Shadow Feed, however, dead for a long time, and that may force them back. Haven't taken an objective here. IG hanging on, not losing their precious anti mage. And he goes in again onto S4. The stun, the combos, but a good save here. Nice cold embrace from Kurogi, keeping Zai alive for now. He snowballs back. He's just stalling from the rest of the team. Puppy, no bash. No bash, and now the blink out. Burning's on the hunt. He won't even get that far as Tron will finish him. They lose the gem as well. Aegis also expended along with the cheese. IG. That was a really good hold, all things considered. No racks claimed. The lanes are going to get pushed out now. They lose the gem for secret. And Blitz, they didn't even have to use a buyback there. I mean, so many things went wrong for Secret in that fight. Kuro uses the Winter's Curse on one of Burning's illusions, and Burning just hits his own illusion. He still has most of, the, most of his HP, and Secret just thought that the Shadow Fiend was going to be pretty much unkillable, and S4 just doesn't do enough damage with his hero right now. And 
So there's no reason for IG to have to blow up anybody else. And even with the Aegis, you saw S4 was so tentative. He didn't want his entire team to get mana voided. So he just was too afraid to go in. Like, even if he has the Aegis, if you get your entire team mana voided and killed, what was the point of it? <laughs> He's not winning a man fight either. And now Burning getting the core items. Oh, this is the solo Abyssal kill item. Up. Any hero caught alone, even Arteezy, if he doesn't have the Solar Crest on him, is, is probably dead to this. This is, this is solo kill potential for IG and confidence for Burning now as he moves through the enemy jungle, still taking the safer lower hanging creeps. But S4 doesn't go hex blitz. He goes here for a Shiva. He's good against the physical damage, but it means they don't have all that much lockdown for the anti mage. I would have almost preferred to see the Lincoln Sphere picked up or the Hex. Just for the Mana Void. Exactly, yeah. because if you notice, it's s is not playing this poorly at all. But what he is afraid of is that Mana Void onto his teammates, more than just himself. Like, if he trades his life for one hero, it's probably okay because Arteezy can clean the rest of them up. But it's just that Mana Void that's keeping him so locked up in fear. And you can't really give up that four-man Mana Void if you can help it. And IG, IG looking for it. They did it once before against one of the strongest teams in this event, LGD. They took a game off them on the back of a burning anti-mage. It was an easier run there. Secret have made this ever so difficult, and they do lead by a melee Rex currently. Can IG pull it off again? Secret, no. With the Weave cast, they know that there's no way that that's just a Dazzle up there with that anti-mage. And so they're splitting up. They're trying to find multiple angles uh, of attack. Kuro's, Kuro's looking to go in, perhaps. He's got the Blink and the Winter's Curse. Can they... Maybe cancel a TP out. Hunting, Schwan in the trees, he should be fine. Everybody else now retreating. Faith not gonna get scouted here, and he will also escape. S4 finally bowling in. Does he oh, bite Luo? He just trapped him. Didn't BKB before the TP will get caught. And focus, Luo down. No buyback blitz, dead for a minute. Can they hold this? It's, it's the top lane, which means they won't lose a melee rax there, but maybe Secret even swing towards mid. And they need this Darkseer vacuum wall to take a team fight. He they certainly one, do. He was their one saving grace in that bottom fight where they were able to hold it. That vacuum into that lion double stun was what allowed them to get so many kills and opportunities there. And without that available, I don't know if they can hold. Secret Art pushing on mid. The glyph is up. It's only 30 seconds. With the glyph, he probably gets here just in time, but the, the tower almost certainly dead before he does. It's going to be close for IG. Can they pull it off? They're not split pushing. All lanes are moving towards the Radiant base, leaving IG with no choice but to hold the high ground. The Weave comes out. This will mitigate some of Arteezy's damage, but the tower, oh, they prevent it from going down now. Holding for now. Get a couple of extra auto attacks off from that and burning. Prep to go in, but where's the initiation? Where is it gonna come from? No darks here for three. They may have to sack with Melex. No, they engage, but Arteezy BKB was ready for this. Burning, unable to focus them down during this time as the Grave will keep Twan alive on the back of the fight. The Requiem, it's coming for burning. He's back and they leap forward s4 can he get the job done almost mana boy on two burning with the blades they're gonna get on easy a complete hold for ig they even keep the melee rex alive and they'll kill off the creeps they hang on again and it has to start getting its secrets head now that's a 5k gold swing it is a lot of structural damage blitz and you saw the weakness of the storm right there. He's right next to Arteezy, expends barely any mana, but it does half of both of their HP pools. You can't do that if you're a storm spirit. You have to wait for the mana void A to either go off or B. You just have to initiate on the anti mage with as little mana as possible. But S4 uses just a little bit too much, and you saw the strength of that mana void. It just single handedly wins them that fight. And I mean, the legend of the burning anti mage continues as they managed to hold once again without even losing the racks. And the lanes will push out now. This was something they didn't have going into the last Roshan attempt. They smoked, but it was a bit obvious as Bernie will TP to the bottom lane. It looks like he wants to go. He'll have the Abyssal at the ready. They are going to move into position to contest the secret, though. Have Vision on two down in the river as IG walk in. They don't have Shadow Fiend. They're trying to force the buyback with this movement. Have to be careful not to get caught on the way out, though. As 430 gets pushed around, is he going to oh, BKB so here? He's going to need to. He gets stunned. Now netted, held in position, burning, trying to clear out the creeps. Arteezy stubbornly oh, refusing to buy back, there? but it's going to cost them Puppy. A Blake in, follow up, stun from the Abyssal, and Puppy's down for the count. He does not have buyback. And into the pit they go. No Arteezy for this fight. S4 looking for a miracle agent steal perhaps he's dropping the remnants here on the high ground they've got vision from the sigil it moves directly in the pit to slow this down and Arteezy will respawn three seconds curl could blink at winter's curse ig have to be ready for this in the shards go rose drop below burning getting back to the last moment now the jump can he get it burning grabs it the radiant gets the kill everything for ig and now the back the cleave destruction ig
G takedown two. Will they get Zai? Yes, they will. Burning again, refusing to die, will not be denied. And IG sees momentum. This gold graph is going straight up and the lanes are all now headed the wrong way for Secret. This is just some kind of horrible dream for Secret. They don't, I mean, this is hard to understand They did how. everything right. They pushed out all the lanes. They waited for the Aegises. They waited for the item progression. They went those right builds. And I mean, all of a sudden they just can't hold anymore as IG, they set up that wall that they just couldn't penetrate anymore. And it was just on the back of great team play it's time and time again. It's an 8,000 gold burning anti-mage. And he's looking for melee racks. No glyph on the dire side. It's still cooling down here. He'll blink out. Does take quite a bit of damage. And Kuroki goes in there. It's the Winter's Curse. They're going to turn burning against his own countrymen. But burning stands. He'll fight through this. The BKB from Arteezy forced out. Can they kill him again? Blink and Hex onto Arteezy. Follow-up stun is there. And now Bernie leaps in. He's looking for another oh, kill. The back. The back. But where's the follow-up to send home for Puppy? It's gonna keep Arteezy alive as S4 retreats. He's a monovoid waiting to happen. He doesn't die, but it'll cost them the Winter Wyvern. It's Secret's turn to hang on. The Burning Illusion looking to finish off what the heroes could not. But in the end, IG are also rebuffed. They will not get Rax this day, and they will go home. And Blitz, <laughs> let's talk about shopping here. Burning's got some gold. The rest of the team has picked up quite a bit. What are the next big items for IG? Have you seen Burning in real life? He likes to wear expensive things. He's, so. he's more blinged out in real life than he is in this he game. He really is. You know, he likes the finer thing in life, but I think going for something like a heart, uh, an MKB would be incredibly crucial here. You're noticing that the Solar Crest is paying off so well against him. When he uses that Manta, they know which one is him. They just Solar Crest him up. He's having a hard time getting on top of heroes, and they need that to happen. And Burning, he's going to get the fully completed MKB. Oh, dear. I'd imagine that's going to be you sell your treads and get a Boots of Travel, and you still have enough for buyback at this point. And there is no man fighting Burning. The Winter's Curse becomes Secret's biggest weapon now. It's it's really on Kuro at this point. And I mean, we saw what happens when Burning gets turned against his team. It's not a pretty sight. IG supports catching up now in farm, but have been awful squishy all game long. IG, it's their turn to smoke. They have the buyback you mentioned. They're moving down the middle lane. Lanes are about even here, slowly pushing out on the top side of the map for IG, pushing in on the bottom in favor of Secret. Mid lane at the river, and now cresting past it. Will they find Puppy? Burning's in range. Is he going to go? He has the buyback you mentioned, but he wants to fight with the team, and now they jump. It's a two hero stun. Twan fell one up the hill. More than expected. The back. Look for the monovoid. Burning still holding it. He's not doing anything during this time. Arteezy unwinds the rep but it's S4. He's trapped. He's done. IG searching, searching for more. A missile storms in, and it. Oh, Arteezy playing with fire if that one hits. He does have his ice snowball at the ready. The creeps, the creeps march on, and IG. They look to push in yet again. If they can pull this one back from beyond the grave, it's gonna be a big morale blow to Secret. There is a storm buyback. Secret baiting, waiting for it. They're gonna bait out the blinks, and now the buyback, an instant go, a snowball on two. Walrus punch there, but the defensive E-Blade keeps 430 alive. Back, no follow-up, IG still retreating. Surge back, 430, again, back and back he goes. The call down will cover the retreat, or at least that's the plan. Zai jumping in, he looks for the shards, he doesn't get to a lot, and now burning on Arteezy. Where's the help? He needs it, now he's glimmered. He's sent home, the saves again. Again from Secret, hanging on, but not good enough for the supports. They will fall. Zai, he's down for the count. Eviscerated by Birdie once more. The core's in jeopardy here. They've got a hold against all odds. No buybacks on three of the Secret heroes. If Storm dies again, he's out of the game. And at that point, it's probably GG. Burning's already at 7k gold. They've got a lot of He's got buyback. He's, he's got, got boots of travel. S4 has to be so careful. He's got his BKB up, but it's only six seconds. He's going to jump in just to buy time for his oh, team. He's going on the supports. He makes his move on Chuan, but Burning's there. He's got a Bissell Blade. If he drags run. him down, it's a dieback, and it's big trouble. But Secret, hang on. They bring down the Lion. They only lose a melee Rex through it all. And now bottom lane's pushing. Top Blades pushing, IG unable to fully close out this game. But you look at the tail, the graph tells Blitz. 
and it seems more and more like this is IG's game, and I, I think at this point, it's fair to call him the B-God. He's just picked up a double damager and hitting for... A 650 damage a chop. I mean, first it was the FY Rubik, then we get the iconic Burning Anti-Mage. He picks up a DD rune at the same time. 8, 1, and 5. Ever since the 10-minute mark, he hasn't died once this game. In the 43 minutes since then, just carrying his team behind his back. And IG, I mean, everyone's playing so flawlessly here. Even the decision-making from the supports. You rarely see Faith get caught out, even though he has 1,000 HP and he's a dazzle in the late game. You've got Chuan, who's been playing this game brilliantly. He's got a Blink Dagger, he's got the Ghost Scepter in case S4 decides to all in on him. There's not a whole lot of targets the Seeker can go for at this point. And Bernie, we trust, is the cry from IG. And so far, it has led them well, but they have not closed this game out. And Secret, despite... I don't, I'm not sure they know just how bad it is. It's a 30,000 gold swing against them. But what, it, what really matters here are the racks. And when it comes to the racks, it's only a one range Rax advantage currently for IG. But the other thing to keep in mind is the, are the buybacks here. And looking at the Radiant team, they've got five available. There's only one for Secret and two of them on cooldown for quite some time, four and a half minutes. S4 with few Bloodstone charges for this stage, only seven. So he'll be dead for a decent amount of time. Seems like the big support play is what Secret need. The Winner's Curse, the Sendbacks, the Glimmer Capes. This has been allowing him to even stay close to the fights. Honestly, it's going to come down to the Winner's Curse. If he can get a really good one against one of Burning's teammates, or even on Burning himself, and they can all in on him, then you could see him potentially die. But it's going to take a lot, and it has to be so well placed. The thing is, IG also realize that. They say, they're say they saying to themselves, the only thing that's going to get them back into this game at this point is a really good Winner's Curse. Split up. Never keep the cores next to each other. Keep Faith in position a Dagger, or uh, use the Shallow Grave, and Chuan in position a Dagger forward, and cast his Hex if he has to. But just sit behind Burning. He's really hard to kill. He's got the Butterfly. S4 is not going to hard commit to him in case the Abyssal Blade Ultimate Void uh, turn around and I mean they just have to be so careful against him. They can't hard commit to killing anybody. He's shoving in the lanes. Burning is going for high ground. There's no Burning's dire glyph. Awesome. They're not really in position for this. They're leaving S4 bottom, trying to bait out a TP, but it's only a range rex there in the top lane. That's not good enough. He's gonna get the melee. He cleans up the Chen creeps, cleaving through everything. Secret's still on the wraparound. They're gonna find somebody. It's the 430 gyrocopter. Is that enough? Already the retreat is being scrambled. They hex high. 430 survives that courtesy of the Ghost Scepter. Winner's curse is there, but it's not a burning. He's shredding on TZ. He's held in place, kept alive by a cold embrace, oh, but only for now. He's dead! And does have the buyback. Going for it is S4. He's moving on to mid. He's taking the melee racks during this time. Just burning back. He doesn't have boots of travel. S4 stalling. Dragging creeps. The pings go onto the throne. Oh, IG. He's got the divine. Forget about it. Forget about the racks. They just the want race. it. They want it all. IG want the win. They want it now. Arteezy coming in. There's the ball. The send back. But burning's healthy. He's getting a little nervous with this rapier blitz. He's going to back off from the precipice. It's now two melee racks is on two. Still only a one. Or actually, sorry, it was a range rack. Bit. The melee Rax actually is still alive. Slight creep advantage here for IG, and they push in towards Arteezy. 430, working on the Rax. Everybody on IG is buyback. Nobody on Secret does. Balling in his S4. There's the Hex, the send back again. But what is it accomplishing? Burning's killing the buildings. This base is in shambles. It's going to go down soon. They have Burning to make the move, here. and they got to make it now. He blinks away, oh, and he works on the Rax. There's no glyph. He's going for it. IG will take it. Un Unbelievable! We talked about IG needing big individual performances. He didn't have Ferrari with him, but Burning doesn't even care as he drags them across the finish line. They go for the throne, able to get it, even picking up a Divine Rapier for the swag at the end, and you can hear